Okay, I'm going to uh, try to solve another problem for you here, uh, hoping that I have enough time uh, to get this in. But, uh, I don't have it written out anywhere, so let me see if I can describe it to you. What I'm showing here is a piston and cylinder arrangement. There's a, a piston, here's a cylinder, and it's full of water. And the piston uh, mass is such that the pressure inside the cylinder is 125 kPa. And the piston is free to move up and down until it reaches an enclosed volume of 2.5 meters cubed. If it reaches an enclosed volume of 2.5 meters cubed, then the piston obviously is not free to move. These stops will uh, impede its progress and hold fast and, and thereafter we no longer have constant pressure we have a constant volume process because once the piston reaches if the piston reaches the stops then the volume cannot change okay so what we have described here is an, an initial state uh, we know the pressure and the quality and we know that um, there are two kilograms of water in here. What we're going to do is heat this until the final temperature is equal to 150 degrees C. And so the question becomes what is the final state? Okay. And uh, I'm not sure what it is. So let's let's find out. Let's see if we can think about it. So first of all, as described, if we add heat to this water mixture initially, what's going to happen? The piston will be free to move up. More and more of the vapor will uh, appear. Less and less liquid will remain. Uh, so the quality will increase. And furthermore, that will be done at constant pressure so long as the piston doesn't reach the stops. So if we're thinking about this in terms of a property diagram, which is often a very useful idea, and we've been looking at T, the V diagram, so that's fine. If we think about a property diagram where this is P1 equals 125 kPa along that line. We're starting out somewhere here in the middle. And we know that as we initially add heat to this, we are going to move at constant pressure at, at least some distance. In fact, we can find out how far it goes. Uh, so, so I guess let's think think this through a little bit in terms of the way the problem is described. If we know this initial state is 125 kPa, and we know that the quality is 50 percent, we know that it's a two-phase mixture. So, can you tell me what this temperature is? I'll give you a half a second to think about that because you should know that as long as it's a two-phase mixture and we know the pressure, we can find the temperature. And we can find the temperature from the steam tables and at 125 kPa, that temperature is 105.97. Okay, in this region and on that constant pressure line. So 
Gray uh, said the, the, the question states that the final temperature is 150 degrees C. So we can draw a line here and write 150 degrees C because we're on a temperature scale here. Um, and so I guess the knee-jerk answer might be, well, it just rides along this constant pressure curve, and, and there's the final state, P equals 125 and T equals 150. Well, that would certainly be the case if there were no uh, mechanical stops in this uh, cylinder. But with the presence of the stops, we need to answer the question, is the heat added sufficient to raise the uh, temperature to 150 before it hits the stops or I mean, what's the alternative? If this is heated at least part of the way and we encounter the stops, now it's going to proceed at constant specific volume from that point on. So let's let's just see. We, we know the total volume when or if it hits the stops, and we know the mass in the system. And so we can find if the piston hits the stops. the specific volume, we'll call it specific volume stops, will be equal to 2.5 meters cubed divided by 2 or 1.25 meters cubed per kilogram. All right, half, half of 2 and a 2.5. Okay. So I guess that's the real question to be answered is, is does the piston hit the stops uh, before, before, before this? And um, yeah, how, how are we going to know that? Well, I guess we can figure out where does this 1.25 lie relative to our VF and VG. We know it's more than V. F, so that's not really a concern. But what is VG at, at uh, 125 kPa? VG is equal to about uh, 1.3750. Okay, so what it means is uh, if we're heating along this line at constant pressure, we're, we're never going to reach a specific volume as great as 1.3750. The maximum value that we can attain will be 1.25. So somewhere in here, this uh, the piston is going to hit the stop. Right, we're going to have um, at that point a constant specific volume process. And so we can immediately write that the final state The property coordinates that we need to find the final state are 150 degrees C and 125 meters cubed per kilogram. So immediately we don't know where's that. 
is that final state still inside the two phase region? Because it is clear that this turns and goes up before turns and goes up before it um, reaches the VG. But but does the final state 150 degrees C occur inside the two phase region or or outside the two two phase regions? We're supposed to find the final state. And that means we need to find the phase or phases that are present. This information is enough to define the state. We need to determine what phase or phases are present. So to investigate that, we're going to look at 150 degrees C and find that VG at 150 degrees C is 0 0.3924 so, so, so what? Well, the specific volume we have is much more than, than that. And so clearly that final state will be in the superheated region. And so the path that this process takes is something like that, where that's state one, that's state two. And if I could squeeze it in there, I would say that was state stops right there where it hits the stops. So since uh, V2 is greater than VG at 150 degrees C, that means that state 2 is in that superheated region. Okay, so just for fun, let's see if we can find that. This is similar to uh, an earlier problem where we need to go in the superheated tables and find an, a known specific volume at a known temperature. So we'll find ourselves moving across the uh, superheated tables looking for this V equals 125, 1.25. So let's see what we can find. We know that it's uh, more than a pressure of 125 kPa. So at 0 0.2, uh, 200 kPa in 150 degrees C. Uh, the value is Point nine five nine eight six, and at one hundred kPa, it's one point sixty nine. So it looks like we need to interpolate And here we have a um, specific volume, pressure, specific volume uh, first is 1.6959, and that's at a pressure of 100 kPa. Then I'm looking for P2, and that value is going to have 1.25 meters cubed per kilogram. And then the next pressure is 200 kPa, and this number is 0 0.95986, 0 0.95986 at um, 200 kPa. So if I set up my ratios, I can find that 1 point, sorry. 1.25 minus 1.6959 is to 0.95986 minus 1.6959 as P2 minus 100 
is to 200 minus 100 or 100. And so if we work this out, sorry, you've been a little behind me there on the screen. See if I can get you caught up. There we go. So uh, we found D2 and T2 in the superheated tables by moving across the tables from the lowest pressure going up. And we know that the pressure is greater than 125. Um, but we found that that specific volume value of 1.25 is bracketed between a pressure of 100 kPa and 200. KPA. And so this is my formula for interpolation set up by these uh, differences. And so we can find uh, P2 as being equal to uh, my fraction. I'll just call this thing over here fraction. 100 times my fraction plus 100. So that looks like it's uh, 100 times uh, 1 plus fraction. It just works out to be that way. But what's that fraction? Oh, let's see if I can do it. 1.25 minus 1.6959. I need to divide that by point nine five nine eight six minus net fraction is equal to 0 0 0.6058 times One hundred and sixty point six. Okay, and then anything else that we needed to find that we could find by interpolation using those fractions. Uh, if we needed internal energy or we needed whatever. Okay. Well, that's it then. That's a, a little bit more complicated problem that involves heating of a uh, two phase mixture in a piston cylinder arrangement fitted with uh, peristops. Mm -hmm.